Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to take one more look at the ending of Dark, and we'll answer a lot of questions I've seen popping up in the comments of my videos. Initially, I thought about doing a big Q&A, but as I looked over the list, I realized that a lot of the questions are related. To be clear, the ending of Dark is open for interpretation. There are competing theories, which I'll address, but I have my thoughts about what the ending means, and those shape my point of view. Personally, I'm okay with differing opinions. The writers are the only ones that know for sure about some of these points, and explaining them would ruin the effect they set out to create. So, before we dive in, this is your spoiler warning. I'm going to talk about things that happened in the Netflix series Dark, including its ending. If you haven't completed all three seasons, then this video won't be for you. Dark Season 3 did an impressive job of providing answers to all the questions the series asked. It's a complicated story though, and many fans were left scratching their heads about different details. These can be broken down into categories. There are some questions that we aren't supposed to know the answers to, like what happened to Waller's eye. Questions that we weren't shown the answers to but can make a solid guess, like where did Agnes go when we last saw her? Questions that are supposed to have some mystery about them, like what was going on with Jonas and Marta seeing the kids on the bridge between worlds. Some things that we did get answers to, but some fans might have missed, like what was the point of Noah building the chair time machine in the bunker? And then, things that really didn't make sense or I don't have a good explanation for, like why did we see Michael and Alt Marta show up near the caves covered in black goo? I'll start with a couple things that we know answers to, and that'll open the door to discuss the bigger picture. I've seen the question, why was Noah working on the time machine in season one? And why was he killing those kids? Part of that was story related. The mystery of it was a good way to hook fans in and a way to connect the characters and their backstories. Ulrich, for example, is a cop in the 2019 timeline, and his brother Mads going missing 33 years prior played a part in him choosing that profession. It served as an introduction to time travel and how things were connected. Remember, as a child, Helga was the first person to travel successfully through the chair, and then as an adult, he was instrumental in helping Noah build a device that his younger self would be transported in. So the bunker and abductions helped to lay out the non-linear story. As far as why they needed to build a time machine when others already exist, Adam explained this to Jonas in season two. Each machine is an evolution of the one before it. And even though this evolution happens in a non-linear fashion, each machine has to be built for the others to exist. He used the example of not being able to build a car without first inventing the wheel. Asking why Noah is building the chair would be the same as asking why Claudia takes the plans to Tan House so he can build the box machine. It's also worth mentioning, since the methods of using the children seem harsh, that Noah is just following the notes detailed in the Triquetra notebook. The idea that everything is connected helps to answer a lot of similar questions like why does the unknown trio go around killing people? They do it because the power plant needs to be built and the accident needs to happen back in 1986 in order for the time travel fuel to be created. Another example of something similar but unrelated is why Katarina has the same name in the origin world. In Adam's world, she was named Katarina because when her mother was young, she met Hannah, who was using that name, and she liked it. This is neat when you put it together, and you might ask, if this never happened in the origin world, why does she still have that name? The answer is actually simple. Adam and Eva's worlds were created from the origin world. It came first and she was named Katarina there. Everything that happens in the knot was influenced by the origin world and not the other way around. You could apply this to other questions like, why did Claudia have a child with Bern Doppler? Well, age difference aside, they are a happily married couple in the origin world. They are Regina's parents there, so they would be in the knot as well. This brings us to the big picture questions about how things work in Dark and the different theories to explain things. If you watched my How Did Claudia Know video, then you know that I was leaning heavily towards Adam and Eva's worlds being deterministic systems after watching the finale. To me, it makes the most sense that these two worlds were created with fully formed timelines, where none of the characters can change anything. 
a question I heard a lot was, how was Claudia able to change things this one particular time in relation to the ending? In my view, she wasn't. It always happens. Everything only happens once, but in a way, it's always happening. This leads the characters to experiencing things as they're happening over and over. The idea of an infinite loop and Claudia thinking that, you know, when she talks to Adam, it's the first time. In my mind, it's the only time, though. It's not the first time. One of the other popular interpretations is that what she says about things repeating is actually happening and that she passes information off to herself each time she goes through the cycle. In that process, she figures things out and eventually arrives at a point where she has a plan and she's able to implement it. There are clues that seem to back up both of these theories depending on your perspective. In this version of events, we would have to believe that free will does exist in the system, that the other characters are just held back by their desires and doom themselves to continuing their loops. This is a fine way to look at things, and I'll admit to liking the idea that they keep themselves stuck based on what they want. Where the idea loses its appeal for me is when you start filling in the details of how that would actually play out. I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole in this video though, because the details aren't the most important thing here in my opinion. Really, the only popular idea that's out there that rubs me the wrong way is the idea that the loop and Adam and Ava's worlds still continue after Jonas and Marta disappear. To me, that's contrary to what the ending and to an extent the entire show was about. The creators haven't really revealed too many details about the ending, but they did say this in a Hollywood Reporter interview. Odar says that he views the ending as happy, but it can be interpreted as a suicide mission. He talks about the characters realizing they aren't important and that they can do something good by not being there. He says this gives the other world a huge chance, which for him is a very happy ending, even though it feels very sad. Frieza adds questions she was concerned with, like, do we matter? Can we change anything? Do I actually have free will? She talks about the characters freeing themselves and letting go making for a satisfying ending. To me, this adds up to what I saw on screen and what I described in my Claudia video. Two characters making a decision to bring the existence of their worlds to an end. In my understanding, since time travel will never be created after the car crash is avoided, time is linear in the origin world. Once Jonas and Marta complete their mission, they essentially act as observers. They observe that reality, and therefore all other possible states or realities are off the table. The initial timeline where Tanhaus created his time machine no longer exists and therefore Adam and Eva's worlds cannot be formed in that way. They do not and will not exist again. One of the reasons people hold on to the idea that the cycle is still out there repeating is because of the scene in the bridge between worlds. Jonas and Marta are separated in the beginning and they each see the other as a child through a doorway. Jonas mentions it before they disappear and so, well, people think this means it's happened before. Since this goes against everything I just said, I'm not a big fan of this idea. But then what's going on in this scene? As I said earlier, I think some of these things are supposed to have some mystery about them. Overall, I think this shows their connection and I think this scene exists outside of time itself. In that way, it just furthers the idea that they will always have a connection. And with that, it isn't evidence that it was part of the loop. There's an interesting theory that's out there though, and even though I'm not sure I endorse it, I like the idea behind it. It boils down to this being necessary so that the seed of deja vu can be planted between these two. It then becomes the thing that draws them together. And since this is all happening outside of time and space, there's potential for it existing beyond the timelines and worlds we've already seen. It's a nice idea and who knows. I think it's interesting that they don't come together and then leave the bridge until it happens. I also think that since they access the tunnel in the split second where cause and effect break down, it opens the door to the connection being bigger than what we've seen to this point. That ties into the next question I heard a lot, which was, why does it have to be Jonas and Marta? If Claudia discovered the origin world, why didn't she go there herself? I mean, I get where people are coming from with this to an extent. It does seem like a lot of extra moving parts to bring into the plan. 
I think part of this is story related. Frankly, it makes for a better ending that Jonas and Marta are the ones to bring this to an end. They are literally the beginning and the end of their worlds. To their credit, the writers littered plenty of explanation as to why Claudia thought it had to be them into the story. And if you like the idea of the bridge being the point of creating the seed of deja vu, then this would actually be essential. This one statement sums it up. You two are parts of a whole. Only together can you return to the origin world. Some of the other questions I brought up at the beginning, a lot of people have been asking what happened to Bowler's eye, and I hope part of this is just furthering the joke. How he injured it isn't important, and the creators were just playing with our curiosity about it. They decided during season two they wouldn't reveal the answer, and used the interruptions in his trying to explain to play off. They even went as far as making the words right eye a link on his page on the official website, and when you click on it, it just hangs like it's loading the page indefinitely. Where Agnes went when we last saw her travel is another question I heard a lot. Since we saw Adam give her the newspaper article about Claudia's death, I think we can put it together. Her actions in season 2 are the only things we know about her story, so I think it makes sense that she traveled to that point in time. Another detail that falls into the same category is the question of who built the Gold Sphere time machine. Since Adam's world has the box time machine that Tanhaus built, we can imagine that he created one in Eva's world too. The show didn't provide the backstory for this or why it's so much more advanced, but at the end of the day, him making it is the only thing that makes sense. If we're working from the assumption that the timelines were created fully formed to account for all the other bootstrap paradoxes, it exists as it is because it does. Finally, the one thing that I don't have a great explanation for is the scene outside the caves where Michael and Marta appeared covered in what looked like cesium. I always thought that the Michael scene was included to show Jonas's internal struggles and were likely a vision or a hallucination. The creators may have added the Marta scene to show how she is similarly struggling with the new situation she finds herself in, but her being dressed in the same clothing the original Marta wore the night of the party in Adam's world makes no sense to me. I think it's probably an effort to show their connection, but it's one that didn't particularly work in my opinion. There are a few other questions out there that will remain unanswered, like who were the other people in the Sick Mundus photo? Why were there two different versions of the Conwald family photo in season one and two? Why did Jonas and Helga get transported to different places after touching through the wormhole, but Elizabeth and Charlotte ended up together? What happened to Adam in the reality where he killed Ava? And how did Noah travel back in time in 2041 after Charlotte was kidnapped? And with those, I will bring this video to an end. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and about any other questions you still have. As far as the mechanics of what I think happened at the ending, there's a pretty good thread on Reddit that compiled a lot of the explanations about many of these questions. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video, and you can draw your own conclusions. When I first saw it, I was glad to see people were reaching a consensus about some of the things I was thinking about, and I guess, if you favor one of the other interpretations, it might give you something to think about. It also mentions the idea that Jonas and Marta are the souls of Merrick and Sonia inside the knot. I haven't really talked about this because I don't find it very compelling, but I've seen a lot of you mentioning it in the comments. It's cool if you want to read that into it, but how do you deal with the inconsistency in how they manifest compared to everyone else? Also, the actual Merrick, Sonia, and Charlotte are part of Tanhouse's story inside the knot. So why would that connection be necessary? I don't know, so let me know what you think. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, I will talk to you soon.